Hey guys, Rich Nelson here to give you a little overview of the 2015 lineup. We've got new boards, updated molds for most of the current line, some new machine features, and of course some fresh graphics. First we're going to talk about the newest board in the lineup, the Nelson Prime. It comes in a top mount and a drop through version. The Prime is a symmetrical board with rocker and some serious pockets. One of the more unique features of the board is the hybrid flush mount. You might be familiar with our press flush mount that we've been using on the Bat Ray and Manta Ray. Naturally, on a board with rocker, your trucks would be mounted a little bit wedged. This screws with the turning angle and can make your ride a little twitchier than you want, so we actually press straight into the mold a flat mounting surface for the trucks. This has an added benefit on top of the board of creating a nice pocket where you can either wedge your foot up against it or squeeze your toe in there for toe sides and it really locks you in. The one downside of this though is that you're limited with how short the wheelbase can go. Since the truck is limited to mounting on the flat surface, you can't go any further than the bend. The way that we solve this is by machining an extra area out of the pressed flush mount, which makes room for an extra shorter wheelbase. This means that your trucks will be mounted inside the pocket, so when you're standing in there, your feet are over the bolts and you have that direct connection to your trucks that can help your ride feel more responsive. The Prime also has wheel flares to help round out that pocket and to give you extra wheel clearance. The wheel bases range from 25.5 to 28 inches. The board comes in at just under 35 inches long and it's 9.8 inches wide. Lastly, there's some relief bends you might notice along the edge here. That helps alleviate some of the stresses from pressing in rocker to the board. And it can also give you a nice little reference point little lock-in point for when you're doing toe side pre-drifts. The drop-through version has most of the same features as a top mount since it's pressed on the same mold. It's 35 inches long by 9.8 inches wide. The wheel bases are 28.25 to 29.25. These are a little bit longer because we need extra clearance when the trucks are dropped through. The drop-through lowers the ride by at least a half inch so it makes it a lot easier to push and it's going to drift out pretty easily too. So if you're learning to slide, if you need a commuter, or just want something that's going to drift for days, drop-throughs are a good choice. The Prime graphic was designed by Calvin Latouri, a skater and an artist from Massachusetts. He also designed the graphics for our Cyclone, Tempest, and Spindrift. Next up, we're going to talk about the Bat Ray, which is probably the most versatile board in our lineup. We've got a couple different options you can see here. There's the symmetrical version with double kicks, and the directional version with single kicks. Each version comes in either an 8-ply or a 7-ply option. This year we added the hybrid flush mount just like we talked about on the Prime. This let us get in an extra short wheelbase at 23.5 inches wide in addition to the 24.75 and the 26-inch wheelbases that we already had. I have my bat ray set up on that inner 23.5 inch wheelbase with some 46 degree gun metals. Using some slightly lower angle trucks on that inner wheelbase makes for a great all-around setup, whether you're bombing, free riding, or even just screwing around with some flat land on the top of the hill. The Bat Ray mold got some updates as well. We focused a lot on the kicktail area. The Bat Ray's always had that concave that goes straight into the kicktail, and it feels great, but before the kicktail angle was a little mellow, so we spent some time developing a new curve that's a little bit steeper, so it gives you more leverage for alleys, and helps lock your foot in a little bit more when you're standing behind the bolts. Besides that, we increased the depth of the pressed flush mount just a little bit to help make the pocket on top just a little more defined. The custom color options on the Bat Ray have always been super popular, so we made sure with the new graphic to keep some options available. If you need your board right away, these are the stock colors on each version of the board that you see here, but if you don't mind waiting around two weeks, we can put your favorite color on whichever version of the Bat Ray you want. There weren't many improvements to be made to the Manta Ray, so this version should look pretty familiar. If you like the curves of the Bat Ray, but you're a bigger guy with a wider stance, or you just need a longer wheelbase option for bombing, the Manta Ray is a good choice. The Manta Ray is 36 and a half inches long by 10 inches wide, with wheelbase options ranging from 27 to 28 inches. The only real update to the Manta Ray this year is adding that relief bend along the side of the rail. It's there for the same reason as it is on the Bat Ray and the Prime, to help alleviate some of the stresses from pressing in the rocker, and also to give you a nice little pocket for toe side pre-drifts. 
The Stingray lineup also got some updates this year. We'll start with the KT36. The biggest update to this board is adding in some front-loaded rocker. In combination with the wheel flares, this really cradles in your front foot. Besides that, we adjusted the kicktail transition to make it feel a little bit more natural. It still has that cereal bowl, so the concave continues all the way into the kicktail. On the KT36, the wheel bases range from 19 inches to 23 inches. The board's 9.75 inches wide, and it tapers to about 9.5 in the back. This year's KT36 graphic was designed by Alicia Philback, who sells her art on t-shirts and prints through the Animus Code project. She also rides for Caliber trucks and Arbor skateboards. Next up, we'll talk about the Stingray DH. Just like the KT36, we added that front-loaded rocker to really lock in your front foot, but there's some more interesting stuff going on in the back. In the back of the board, there's an eighth of an inch drop that meets up with a steep section of W. The purpose of this is to create two pockets, so whether you're regular or goofy, there's a nice little pocket for your back foot while you're in a tuck. You won't need to look down to adjust it to make sure it's in the right place, and you'll know it's secure and it's not going to move while you're riding. Up in the front, we have the signature Stingray wheel flares that go with the deep machined wheel wells to give you good wheel clearance. On the back of the board, there's a serial bowl bend, so if you're doing some free riding and you like to ride far back on the board, you'll have a nice pocket that surrounds your foot on three sides. The wheel bases on the Stingray DH range from 23 to 28 inches, so you have a lot of options to dial in your setup. The Stingrays were the last of the updated boards, but while we're at it, we'll give you a little rundown of what's staying the same from our previous lineup. This is our line of dropped boards. We have the Cyclone, the Tempest, and the Spindrift. The Cyclone and Tempest are both off of the same mold, so they share the same 25-inch standing platform, while the Spindrift is a little longer with a 27-inch standing platform. Even though the boards are pressed on two separate molds, they still share the same drop profile. They have the concave going all the way into the drop to meet it here, giving you a pocket all the way around. The drop isn't just there to lower the platform, it's also there to give you a nice pocket. So we put a lot of work into developing the curve here. It starts off with a more mellow curve going up to simulate concave for the outside of your foot, but when it levels off it's a really sharp bend. The purpose of that is to give you a nice hard stopping point. The Tempest is 9.8 inches wide by 42 inches long. That gives us room for some nice 4.6 inch kicktails with plenty of curve to give you leverage for flat ground or freestyle tricks. The wheelbases range from 27 inches to 28 and a half inches. The Cyclone shares the same adjustable wheelbase drop through cutout as the Spindrift, with wheelbases ranging from 27.5 to 28.5 inches. The board's 9.8 inches wide by 40.5 inches long, with some nice four inch kicktails. The Spindrift has 30 and 31 inch wheelbase options that fit in the adjustable wheelbase drop through cutouts. It's 10 inches wide by 40.5 inches long. Construction wise, since the platform on the Spindrift is a little longer, it only comes in a 9 ply option. The Tempest and the Cyclone both have 8 or 9 ply options, depending on if you want a little bit of flex or a little extra stiffness. On the website, you can see a little guide. Based on your weight and riding style, it'll help you choose the right one. Last up, we have the Siphon. It comes in a 35 and 38 inch lengths. It's a no frills double kick for all around riding, and it has some unique features, mainly the cereal bowl concave. The kicktail transition starts around here, and on most boards, it would be completely flat. But on the siphon, the concave continues until it meets the kicktail, giving you a 270 degree pocket. That pocket's there to make sure that the board can handle any type of riding that a longboarder would do. Pretty much any old double kick is going to be able to keep up if you're in a park or a street scenario. But when you're bombing a hill, or throwing out a slide, you want to know that your feet are secure and they're not going anywhere. The Siphon still features the ship graphic that I designed for it last year. The 35 inch version is 9.5 inches wide with 16 to 17 inch wheelbase options, while the 38 inch version is 9.75 inches wide and has 18.5 to 19.5 wheelbase options. The 35 inch version only comes in a 7 ply, well, the 38 inch option comes in a 7 or 8 ply option in case you need something a little stiffer for faster riding. So thanks for checking us out and I hope you like the looks of the new lineup. Everything's prototyped and manufactured right here in our factory located just outside of Philadelphia. All of our boards are designed and built by skaters. We're working on a little behind the scenes factory video and I'll link to it right here when it's done. 
As always, you can get the boards at nelsonlongboards.com. And we're also starting to partner up with shops that help support the skate scene, like mirrorskate.com and Community Bikes and Boards in Philly. So have fun with the summer weather, skate safe, wear a helmet, and of course have fun. See you guys later.